Okay, so we just saw that we could show where a function is concave up and where it's concave down. Now what about places where it just changes from one to the other? Well, those are what we're going to call inflection points or points of inflection, no matter. You'll hear it both ways. So let f be a function that is continuous on an open interval, and let c be a point in that interval. So it is important that this does have to be a point where it's an inflection point, so it has to be a point on the graph. The point c f of c is an inflection point if the concavity of f changes at that point. Okay, so let's look at this little sketch here. Over here, all right, we definitely see a place where uh, the graph is concave down. And up here, we definitely see a place where the graph is, well, let me write it on the other side, concave up. So somewhere in between there, it had to have changed. So again, hard to do from a diagram here, but let's call it this point right here. That point where it changed from concave down to concave up is what we're going to call an inflection point. And again, or a point of inflection is what some people might say. All right, so the idea is these are important points because basically this is where the curve changes its shape in a particular way from being concave down to concave up. And we want to identify these. So how do we find them? Well, again, like we were doing before with the first derivative, we have to look at important places. And what we're going to look is we're going to look where the second derivative is zero, or the second derivative does not exist. Just like we did in trying to find where the relative max and relative min was. That involved the first derivative, now it's the second derivative. So these are the only possible places for inflection points, but having the second derivative equals zero, or the second derivative undefined does not guarantee an inflection point. Just like with the first derivative, we build up these candidates to be inflection points, but they have to be checked. If you don't um, believe it, then let's consider f of x equals x to the fourth. Okay, So the first derivative would be 4x cubed. The second derivative would be 12x squared. Now obviously 12x squared, the second derivative is zero when x equals zero, right? And yet that is not an inflection point. All right, x to the fourth looks something like this. It's a little bit of a flatter version of of x squared. So we see that 0, 0 is not an inflection point. It did have the second derivative equal 0, but it's not an inflection point because the concavity didn't change. And that's the key. You need a change in concavity for a point to be an inflection point. All right, so again, we're going to set up candidates. The only places where it could happen is when the second derivative is zero or undefined. The fact is, though, that it won't be at all those points 
and so we're going to have to see where exactly it is. So let's see how we do that in an example here. Find the inflection points and discuss the concavity of the graph. So basically find any inflection points and then tell where it's concave up and concave down. All right, so we start with the original function. Good, okay. We're gonna to need to look at the second derivative, have to go through the first derivative. So that would be three x squared minus 12 x plus 12. Second derivative, 6x minus 12, which is 6x minus 2. All right. So then I ask my questions. When is the second derivative equal to 0? When is the second derivative undefined? And again, we're talking undefined when the original function is defined. All right. Well, the second derivative would be 0 when x is 2, look at the second derivative, and there isn't any place where the second derivative is uh, undefined. All right, so obviously 2 is an important point for us. So we're going to go again, and we're going to do a chart again for our second derivative. We're going to put any relevant points, so either discontinuities of the original function, we didn't have any, or these points that we just talked about. So then I go into my uh, second derivative and I start plugging in points from each of these regions. So if I plug in 1, I would get a negative. If I plugged in, say, 3, I would get positive, telling me that below 2, f is concave down, which I'll abbreviate as CD, and here above 2, F is concave up. Okay, now, so now I have my intervals of concavity, but note we have a change in concavity at 2. So it went from concave down to concave up. That makes this an inflection point at 2 something. Okay, now remember it's not just an inflection point because the second derivative is 0. That's what got the number 2 on the chart. It's a second, it's a an inflection point because we had the change from negative to positive in uh, second derivative, hence change from concave down to concave up. All right, again, if I want to know the actual point where this occurred, I'd have to go back to my original function to get the y value. I take 2 oops, and I plug it in. And if I plug 2 into this original function here, then I'm actually going to get 8. All right, so now we can summarize. We have a concave up. Oops, I forgot to fill in the 8 there. We have concave up on 2 infinity, and we have concave down on negative infinity to 2. And in that way, oops, I forgot. <laughs> we also want to note the inflection point. at 2, 8. Uh, again, notice that the inflection point, that's a point, so that's the point 2, 8, whereas the others are intervals, and we have to know that um, from context there. All right, so that's how we find um, the inflection points by checking concavity.